time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're midway through 1611 in Brezza's uh, colony in um, Jai Jatiboniku. Got hit pretty hard. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. Uh, first, a plague hit, which made the largest size colony, which was only his, go down to, to uh, one. Then we just had malaria strike the jungles, and that wiped the colony out altogether. Not a huge deal. That colony wasn't that great for him, but um, it was also, uh, he didn't get a return on his investment. I think he paid two for it. Um, he wasn't supposed to be able to even trade for that colony, so I took an additional coin from him because he was cheating. Uh, so there's that. What else has happened? Um, hmm, let me see. So the plague happened. Oh, Demi destroyed Vaughn's mill after he had a turn where he not he's kind of losing out on the trading people still kind of want to butter Vaughn up but Vaughn has her own bumblebee now so that's going to maybe change things too she's going to want to be trading with herself um, but she's making a handy profit probably one of the bigger earners Otto's doing well for himself doesn't have a colony yet um, but he did get a new bumblebee um, let's see Dutch for bite Freibuters. Fri I used to know how to pronounce Dutch. Freibuters, maybe. But it's probably said a little differently than that. Um, and that's about it. This next card is pretty interesting. It can uh, make a, a fleet, a Quicksilver fleet. Now, what a Quicksilver fleet does, and a fleet is one of the bumblebees, um, is when it trades with a, a colony. That colony increases in size, so that's going to be a hot item. Vaughn may even want to get rid of one of her existing Mordita, well, this existing Mordita card in order to get it, because that would allow her to bump her colonies up, which gives her more trade capacity. Pretty nice. We've done two rounds of trading. We're just about to start 1612 here. Um, thought I'd go over how things have been shaking down. Uh, Otto's been consistently making a profit of two. That's the maximum he can get. Vaughn's getting four nowadays. She's got two colonies, one with uh, that can can trade up to two, one that can trade one, and then a boatsman there. Um, she's going to want to try and get that boatsman up in size, though, so that it, it can trade even more. Brez has been pulling in two with his, uh, his buccaneer there. Cowboy's get, been trading with himself um, and just getting in two, though. Sometimes he can pull in three if someone will trade. You know, someone else will trade with them. And then that leaves Demi, who's only getting one. There's not enough uh, bumblebees to, f to fill every flower. So we don't have another bumblebee. Man, we get a lot of these smuggling ports. I did shuffle this. Um, so Cuba is in trouble. Cuba's getting cholera. And that's not going to really affect anyone right now. I don't think that does anything to the treasure city there. Um, so we won't worry about that. Yeah, they just lose a side, a size. Okay. It's another treasure year. Vaughn is making the same proposal. She she's made every other treasure year, and even split between the four with with boats. This time it's a little different because she could actually help in transporting the goods. She doesn't really need everyone, um, but she would like to bring them all into it so that. Um, there's less of a risk of piracy or someone trying to take the treasure. Brezza pointed out that she should help carry so that he has a hold space available um, on his boat. Though I don't know that he can he can um, use it. But she argues that she has to spend the dollar anyway to designate the treasure fleet so that the profit that she can get back by using her own boat um, to trade rather than carry treasure it, it, it's, it's fair. It's actually fairer than it has been before, is her argument. And so they're going to go along with it once again. Um, Brezza, I want to highlight this, he's got a lot of di a couple different guns in his Mordita cards that he can point at Vaughn, but he's not quite ready to use them. Vaughn's tinkering with the balance between Otto and Brezza. She had allowed Brezza to to increase his, the size of his fleet. She's now done the same for Otto so that she doesn't have to rely so much on Brezza and so that there's maybe more of a counter in the water. 
The increase in size allowed Demi to get his full trade potential met this this year. Um, everyone had a good year. Um, yeah, Brezos is kind of stagnant in his trading capability. Just too bad. He's got a lot he can do with that money, but he's got to wait for the right moment. Uh, Cowboys pulling in three. Otto's pulling in three now. Uh, Vaughn, she converted this into a Quicksilver fleet this year, which allowed her to get her colony up to its maximum size. She also has a colony at size one. She she put she had another uh, mill. She put the mill here instead of on her bigger colony, so that it'd be less attractive for someone to take down. Um, this colony, two different players could get rid of the mill. Uh, both Brezza and Demi have that capability. This colony, only Demi can do it, um, but it costs him two to do so. So, let's, let's pull up our next card. And it's a Papal Blessing. And we have another mutiny. Each privateer and pirate loses a soldier and is disrupted. Each immature card is advanced one year. This is not going to affect anybody. We don't have any privateers or pirates currently. And no one has anything maturing. Brezza is requesting that Vaughn increase the size of his fleet. Vaughn replies that that's not necessary right now. There's plenty of... of uh, bumblebees in the field of flowers. Uh, Brezza responds by saying that if she doesn't, he is going to uh, pillage and sack her colony here. Uh, she is not going to let him intimidate her, and so she still refuses, and so he pillages and sacks her colony here. Now, it's supposed to take away the profit from the colony, but what I don't understand about that is there's no profit right now because the profit is taken away at C5 and we're at C2. So I'm going to say that that is going to happen, I guess, at the end of C4 is when it would happen, I suppose. That's that's how we'll do it. We'll, we'll play those at the end of C4. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to me. Trading's occurred. These three are all filled up in their uh, potential profits for the turn. But the um, the situation with uh, Santo Domingo here, it, it's an impending sacking, is putting some pressure on Otto and Vaughn. So Vaughn would rather not anyone trade with Santo Domingo because that money is just going to go to Brezza um, at the end of the turn. But in... If she doesn't trade with Otto, then Otto's not going to get much of anything. He only gets a dollar, and he would like to get three. And she would like him to be in her good graces, so I think she's going to take the trade. And that brings it up to two. And that'll keep Otto from turning to piracy again. She's going to disband this unit. And... Then the sacking occurs, so two, it's going to go, yeah, it doesn't go to, go to Brezza there. So it costs them two dollars in all to do that sacking. It is a treasure year, so Vaughn must designate a treasure fleet. She was very close to not including Brezza in that fleet, but she is going with the same model she's gone with throughout the game. Uh, in making the four Bs, herself included, treasure fleet people. Um, doing elsewise, like I've said many times, would create the odd man out, would cause the odd man out to become a privateer and try to take some of that treasure. Uh, she's close to that point. Things have heated up, but she would rather have Brezza in line at least one more turn. For those of you watching this, I want to make a note. I, The game doesn't come with enough treasure tents to deal with the, the optional rule I'm using. So any of these chips you see in people's, I should have mentioned this sooner, I'm sorry, in people's coffers that are not white are actually treasure tents that they have. So, so far it's been the same for everyone except Demi. I mean, Demi... I, I don't think he really has a chance of winning this game. 
right now, but he wants to do the best he can, right? That's all we can ever do in life. And this game's kind of a life type game in that there's these events that come at you and things, you know, there are people who make choices and not all is in your control. You just have to do the best you can. And that works well when connected with careers because even if you don't win, it's better to get fourth place than fifth place because there is going to be some external um, consequence to the place you get, external to the game, that is. Um, so moving on, Otto made an interesting choice on his turn. He has two units. He's the only person with two bees that can flutter about. And one of his bees is part of the treasure fleet, but his other bee chose to to trade with Demi, which gave Demi some money and Otto some money, but it gave Vaughn no money. Vaughn has two people asking her to up their up their fleet size, and she's going to acquiesce to both. Both Brezza and Cowboy are asking to raise their fleet size, and Vaughn is acquiescing to both of them. Um, Cowboy, she feels like if Cowboy kind of just stays in his own park, which he will if he ups his fleet size, then he's going to stay out of her hair. Um, Brezza, she would like to give him a little bit of appeasement so that he, um, he doesn't keep acting up against her, and that's going to allow her to get more money. Now, I should we should look ahead to kind of understand her choices. We're getting into this area here, which I think is great for this game. For one, this is a game that involves the person with the most money winning, which never seems like a compelling goal in a game to me, because all these people are getting money, right? They're all assumedly happy with their, their, their chosen vocation. So why should it matter to one individual whether or not another person has more than them? Um, how does that make them more winning in terms of their, their own life story? Because life isn't just these five players, right? Life is many people. Um, so you may not be the richest person on the planet, but if you're the second richest, that's not bad. Um, anyway, so this, uh, this whole situation is if, if an event occurs in, after this decade, the game ends. So Vaughn is kind of looking ahead to that and she's kind of got the most money making potential right now. So if she can keep that and if she can keep people out of her hair she has a good chance of winning the game. And even if she doesn't, if she gets second place, that's not a big deal because in the end, we're looking at careers. We have reached a turn of thirst with the um, Santo Domingo card out of play. Uh, there's not enough trading spaces to go around and the unit sizes have gone up. So people uh, want more profit they want to be able to maximize the profit that their bumblebees bring in. Um, Brezza went first this turn, and he man he was able to trade with Demi twice, but that's all that's out there. Um, Vaughn wants to trade with her own colony, as does Cowboy, and so and all of our smuggling ports are already filled, so there's nowhere else for him to trade. That's going to make it interesting on Otto's turn because Otto's going to have no one to trade with. Um, and Brezza wasn't even able to maximize his potential. We just had the potential for our first combat. Uh, Otto's flag fleet right here just interdicted with um, Vaughn's, uh, Vaughn's fleet here. Uh, she's going to just pay him off. When you, when you start combat, before you start combat, um, the, the defender essentially has, a, has the option of just paying the other person a gold, and it probably it may actually go, it may actually be a profit, but that's going to be zeroed out anyway. Um, so she's going to go ahead and do that. If you, if you want to see her route, she went over here to, I think just here, then up through here, and then through Tortuga. She could have gone this way, so I just flipped a coin to see which way she went. 
um, but she ended up going through the Tortuga route and then back to Europe there. And so that could strain relationships, but uh, Brezza kind of proved with Vaughn that you can slight her and it's not necessarily the end of the treasure relationship. Though I think Otto might ha be more hard, hard pressed to uh, increase the size of this fleet. Bad luck for Cowboy, a uh, cholera outbreak in Venezuela caused his colony to move down one. He'd been, um, he won out on that next turn. He's currently the, or the, on that last turn, he's currently the game's leader, um, at least in terms of money. If the game ends soon, which it could, you know, if an event card comes up, and we haven't had any event cards in the whole game, once we get here, then he is the winner right now. Um, but Vaughn has her, her colony back. She still needs to move it up, but she can do that since she has the, the Quicksilver fleet. So she's, she's going to be able to move it up probably to three by the next decade. Treasure fleet year. The treasure year saw the increase of um, back up to what it was of Cowboy's colony and an increase of, of Vaughn's colony here. Um, Vaughn proposed the same thing she's proposed throughout the entire game so far, which is an even split between the four players that are capable of taking part. And they acquiesced once again. Um, things are probably going to start to change soon, though, maybe. I, I'm not going to even go down that road. Uh, Vaughn has the most money again. Cowboy spent five in order to uh, configure his fleet as a slave fleet. Vaughn, she spent one on the Quicksilver there. And that's looking like where it is. Uh, Otto got a good amount of money. Uh, you know, since it was a treasure year, people weren't able to trade to their full potential. Let's pull up the next one. These must go up here. All right, so we have another mutiny. Um, privateers. This is still a privateer, so, so it did do trading this year. I guess it wasn't a privateer. You probably put this back. So I don't think it's going to affect anything. Before I said mutinies didn't affect things, I forgot that the um, Hacendado card was on the, the track here. So it did actually have an effect before. But this time there's nothing on the track. And so we're just going to move on and do kind of a standard trading turn. But we're moving into the place where the, the game could potentially end. And that could um, change how people feel about their their cooperation thus far. Demi feels as though he's assured last place at this point. It's kind of looked that way since the beginning. Who does he blame for that? Uh, primarily Vaughn. She's the one who keeps making the deal that gives everyone a leg up over him. Uh, the, the treasure deal she's made year after year after year gives everyone a benefit except for him. So essentially everyone has 60 more points than he does and it doesn't seem like there's any way he can regain that ground before the game is over. So what is left to him? He has two choices in his mind, either despair or vengeance. And he's choosing the latter because otherwise the game wouldn't be very much fun. And he still wants to have fun even if he is going to be last, the, the worst teacher ever. Um, so he is going to pay for Brazza to disrupt the Hacendado card. And Brazza is going to agree to that because why not? If um, Vaughn goes down, then Brazza goes up. That's the idea. So that's going to be four paid to once again disrupt this colony here, which is going to be, which is poor timing. Um, all right, so there, there we go for that. Does she do anything? <laughs> After Cowboy and Vaughn spent all their money to increase the size of their bumblebees, uh, Brezza did a bid off against Otto for the Huguenot refugees, and he won. He won on the tie because he is of the same religion and the same nationality if it had come to that as the Huguenots, so they're gonna be coming up. It's a kind of a risky bid for him because Vaughn can disrupt it before it even gets to full matur 
maturation for a cost of just three. Um, and the decade ends with everyone making a modest gain and an immodest gain. In the case of Vaughn, she withdrew all, she disbanded all the armies and all the treasure cities that had been built up. This is a, sort of a different game because we have all these smuggling ports on treasure cities. And so, yeah, that, that's been a lot of the trade outlet going on. Once they're full of troops, they can no longer trade. So she pulled all that back for a, a profit of 12. Uh, she also let Otto trade with her colony here. So her, um, her fleet didn't actually trade at all because, you know, with Hacendado out of commission, it's uh, there's there's not a lot a lot to trade with. That's going to change now that these smuggling ports are are open again for trade. Um, so Otto only pulled in one. Demi pulled in his standard two. Cowboy did four, and Brazza did two. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Stream. We are going into the time when the game could end at any point, which is exciting. I really enjoy that fact. Um, if the game ends on this card flip, Vaughn has the game. And it would be Vaughn, and then Otto, then Cowboy, then Brezza, then Demi. But it's probably not gonna. We'll see next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Teaching Lords of the Spanish Main.